This is going to be a long video where I give an overview of the major structures of the nervous system, but I'm going to try to limit it in detail to just the big picture structures that let us move on and walk through the different pathways serving each function of the nervous system, while hopefully keeping us all oriented to where we are in the nervous system. An overview of the major structures of the nervous system is necessary to discuss its functional pathways. The structure of the nervous system is divided into two main parts. The central nervous system, which is mainly the brain and the spinal cord, and the peripheral nervous system, which is almost everything else, and in particular the nerves that travel throughout the body, connecting it back to the central nervous system. Some parts of the olfactory, or smell, and visual pathways that are outside the brain are also central nervous system tissue, but we'll get into that later. The peripheral nervous system is mostly made up of nerves, which contain bundles of axons from motor, sensory, and autonomic neurons, which we'll talk more about later. The peripheral nervous system also contains ganglia, which are small lumps attached to many nerves that contain neuron somas, or cell bodies. A subset of the nerves are spinal nerves that are attached to the spinal cord. So here we're looking at the body from the front, to the anterior view, and here we're blowing up a spinal nerve, but we're looking at it from the top, the superior view. Each spinal nerve is formed from two roots, the anterior and posterior spinal nerve roots. So the anterior is in the front and the posterior is in the back. The spinal nerve roots are attached to the spinal cord and then they fuse together to become the spinal nerve. And the spinal nerve passes through the spine to the periphery, out to the rest of the body. Efferent axons, carrying information away from the central nervous system, exit the spinal cord in the anterior spinal nerve root, and afferent axons, carrying information in toward the central nervous system, enter the spinal cord in the posterior spinal nerve root. Posterior spinal nerve roots have attached ganglia called posterior root ganglia, or for the singular, one posterior root ganglion. Another subset of nerves are the cranial nerves. Here we're looking at the skull, and we're looking at a lateral view from the right side. And cranial nerves are nerves that pass from the intracranial space, the space inside the skull, through the skull out to the periphery. Some of these also have attached ganglia. Branches of most cranial and spinal nerves get progressively smaller as they continue branching and spread out throughout the tissues in the periphery of the body. The spinal cord is divided into 31 horizontal levels that we'll get into later, and each level of the spinal cord has a pair of spinal nerves bilaterally. So there's a right and a left spinal nerve on each level of the spinal cord. For the cranial nerves, there are 12 bilateral pairs, and they are attached to either the brain or the spinal cord. Here we're looking at the brain from below, the inferior view, and the spinal cord is cut off right here. You just see a little bit of the spinal cord. And most of the cranial nerves are attached to the brain, except for one that is actually attached to the upper spinal cord. And in particular, this area called the brain stem is where most of the cranial nerves are attached. The cranial nerves are referred to by either a name or a number, and the numbers traditionally in Roman numerals. So there's numbers one through 12, and I'll just list them off real quick, but we'll get into the details of them later. Starting with 1 and ending with 12 is olfactory, optic, ocular motor, trochlear, trigeminal, abducens, facial, vestibular cochlear, glossopharyngeal, vagus, accessory, and hypoglossal. But again, we'll get into all that later. The tissue of the central nervous system is divided into areas called white matter and areas called gray matter. And the areas called white matter contain many myelinated axons, and the area called gray matter contains many neuron somas. So here we have an axial section of the spinal cord, so a horizontal plane going through the spinal cord, and in the spinal cord, the gray matter is on the inside, and the white matter is on the outside. On axial sections through the spinal cord, the gray matter is shaped like a butterfly, or the letter H. And there's bilateral anterior and posterior parts that are called horns. Some spinal cord levels also have a small lateral horn. And these are named the anterior horn, the lateral horn, or the posterior horn of the gray matter of the spinal cord. The white matter can have a few names, but is often referred to as columns. And it's usually divided up into anterior, lateral, and posterior. 
So the anterior column of white matter, the lateral column of white matter, and the posterior column of white matter. And just to preview some of what we'll be getting into, a lot of the anterior horn gray matter of the spinal cord contains somas for efferent axons that are going to travel in the anterior root of the spinal nerve, whereas axons of afferent neurons travel in the posterior root into the posterior horn gray matter. But more on that later. The brain is divided into three main parts, the cerebrum, the brainstem, and the cerebellum. So here, if we look at the brain in a lateral view, the cerebrum is the main part of the brain on top, the largest part, and it's on top. Under it is the brainstem anteriorly and the cerebellum posteriorly. And here you can see that even a little better in a medial view. So if we're looking from the midline at the brain, again, the cerebrum is the largest part on top. Under that is the brainstem in the front and the cerebellum in the back. And then the brainstem is the part of the brain that's connected to the spinal cord below it. The cerebrum, that top part of the brain, is divided into bilateral cerebral hemispheres. Cerebral or cerebral, I hear it pronounced both ways. So here's the brain, and we're looking down from the top, so it's a superior view, and there's a left cerebral hemisphere and a right cerebral hemisphere. The brain stem is divided into three sections, the midbrain, the pons, and the medulla. So here we're looking at a medial view of the brain. Again, on top is the cerebrum, Behind the brainstem is the cerebellum, and here's the brainstem. And the part connected to the cerebrum, just inferior to the cerebrum, is the midbrain. Just inferior to the midbrain is the pons, and just inferior to the pons is the medulla. Medulla or medulla, I've heard it pronounced both ways. The brain has more gray matter on the outside and more white matter on the inside, which is kind of the opposite of the spinal cord. And the gray matter on the outside of the brain is called cortex. So here we're looking at the brain in a coronal section, and we're looking from the front in an anterior view. So we've cut away the front part of the brain. And on the top, the cerebrum, we have gray matter all the way around the outside of the cerebrum, and that's called cerebral cortex. And then below the cerebrum and behind the brainstem is the cerebellum, and it's also covered in gray matter called cerebellar cortex. The brain stem is not covered in gray matter, so it's a little bit more like the spinal cord in that regards. And here, this lighter colored stuff inside the brain is white matter. Now, in regards to the cortex of gray matter, there are some terms we use, cortical and subcortical, and they're often used as shorthand to describe structures either in the cerebral cortex versus structures beneath the cerebral cortex or deep to the cerebral cortex that we'll call subcortical. And so that term subcortical we'll often use to refer to structures deep in the cerebrum or down in the brainstem. Subcortical areas of gray matter that are located deep in the cerebrum, cerebellum, or brainstem are collections of neuronal somas, and these are mostly called nuclei, subcortical nuclei, which are also gray matter. Now the white matter of the central nervous system contains lots of myelinated axons, and bundles of axons in the central nervous system are called tracts. And the axons in a tract usually carry similar types of information. In addition to neurons carrying motor, sensory, or autonomic information, the central nervous system also contains many interneurons involved in either the lower or higher neuronal functions. So those are interneurons that are connecting other neurons together in the central nervous system. In the brain, there are also loosely organized areas of gray matter deep in the brainstem called the reticular formation. And these are kind of spread out areas of neuron somas th through the brainstem. And this is in addition to the more discrete areas of gray matter called nuclei. So here we're looking at the a medial view of the brain and we're taking some sections through different levels of the brainstem. And you can see these real discrete, obvious nuclei of gray matter then scattered around through all the brain stem. We also have neuron somas, and we refer to this whole thing as the reticular formation. Some of the subcortical nuclei deep in the cerebrum are grouped together into more complex structures, and this includes some particularly important nuclear groups called the thalamus, the hypothalamus that's just beneath the thalamus, and a collection called the basal ganglia, which is actually a misnomer because ganglia is the term for collections of neuronal soma in the peripheral nervous system, and these are 
nuclei, but the name is stuck. The cerebral cortex is divided into structural areas called the frontal, parietal, temporal, and occipital lobes, as well as an area called the insula. So there are some landmarks on the surface of the cerebrum that divide up areas of cerebral cortex that were arbitrarily named as different lobes. And in the front is the frontal lobe, and more posteriorly is the parietal lobe. Inferior to that is the temporal lobe, and the most posterior is the occipital lobe. And then the insula, you can't see here. You actually have to pry apart the temporal lobe and the frontal lobe, and there's an area of cerebral cortex under that. The cerebral cortex is also divided into functional areas, with areas called primary cortex and areas called association cortex. Primary cortical areas perform more basic processing of motor or sensory information. Association cortical areas perform more complex processing of one kind of motor or sensory information, or they process multiple types of motor or sensory information, or they perform some of the higher neural functions.